Hey, this is Scott Traffy Bonsai. Today we're going to look at the playback menu and the Canon EOS M50. This menu I really don't know too much about. I don't use it too much besides just doing the straight up raw processing. So you're going to go with me on this as I learn and try to figure these things out. Let's get started. First page, protect images. This is pretty simple. If you want to prevent yourself from accidentally deleting photos on the camera, of course that doesn't apply to the actual memory card and something else, but in the camera you can protect your images. So let's do protect all images. At this point we can go into playback and try to delete something. It does not allow it. Let's go back into the menu and unprotect. And try to delete. In this case we were able to delete that photo. So with protect you have a lot of other options to select images. You can do it by hand. Each image set and then it'll lock it down. See that little change there? Or you can select a range of images. You can either use the touch screen or use the control here. So select one and then you can select a range of images to lock down. You can do it by folder. I only have one folder, but you can have multiple days, multiple folders. I'm just going to unprotect the entire folder. All right, pretty simple. It is helpful in some situations. You can easily rotate images. Of course, this only applies to JPEG output, but Quickly just rotate an image as you need. Erase images. You can do it by image or the entire folder, entire card. There is also a format feature on the camera that I use instead, but this is an option. So let's just delete a few photos real quick. Let's take these ones. Set. Last image. That point it'll delete everything that is not locked down. Print order. This one's a little unusual. I'm not completely sure, but it basically lets you print with Wi-Fi and it'll take the images you select, give you that option. You can also do amount of prints. So if you want to do two prints, it's all in there. I haven't done any of the Wi-Fi printing, but if we go into the menu, into the actual Wi-Fi settings. It gives you the ability to print to a Wi-Fi printer. I just assume that it relates to that. Let's go back into playback. With the photo book, this is an unusual feature. It lets you select pictures to group into a folder. And then as far as I can tell, that's all it does. You can select your photos to group them up into a special folder. And then on the computer, you'll be able to have those separated. So if you wanted to cull your images basically on here, that is a potential option. It's like multiple ranges, all images in folder. Creative filters is a lot easier to understand. You can easily just go in here and adjust one of your photos. Gives you a few unusual options, black and white, grainy. Go in there. From that point, you can adjust the strength of whatever filter you're using. Let's do another one. Fisheye. This one's easy to notice. So we got extreme fisheye going. Press set. It'll make that JPEG image. Of course, this doesn't apply to raw images. It's all generating JPEG images from these filters. Let's go to the second page. I occasionally use the raw processing because I don't output raw plus JPEG. Usually I just do straight raws. So in some situations where I want to review my images on a phone, I need to make those JPEGs first. So in this case, you can select images by hand. Just each one. Press OK. And either use standard shots or you can customize settings for those raws. And it gives you a decent amount of options to adjust. So if you want to change the color temperature, let's go to auto white balance. You can do the output quality. So if you wanted something smaller, a little quicker for the camera to process. 
also even the color space and put those lens corrections at that point you can just save those selected images so that generates the JPEG image on the card you can also select a range of images to generate those JPEGs from let's do a few here and generate those let's use the standard settings Creative Assist gives you even more control on the images. Let's go in here. Let's pick one photo, click Set. At that point you can adjust a lot of settings. Let's darken it up. Increase Contrast. Adjust Contrast, Saturation, Color Tone. You can even make it black and white if you want. Sepia. So it just gives you a little bit more control there. At that point, we're going to save that JPEG. So you see I pressed this top button here. Let's cancel it real quick. See up here, up top, that's to make the file. So we're making that new JPEG out of it. And it gives you some information. Let's go back into playback. Quick control, raw processing. So this gives you a little more functionality to decide which one you want to use in that situation. Assuming that's in the actual playback menu. So if you wanted to do raw processing instead, you can do that. Or the creative assist. So in the case of this, go into here. Here's that. Let's change it up, see what that does. You can see that it changed this little icon down here so you can toggle that feature go back into playback red eye reduction i don't actually have any photos of people but that will give you an option to remove red eye with flash from the camera cropping easy enough here let's go into crop this image easiest way i found is just to use the touch screen but i assume you can use actual controls here to zoom in and zoom out so the two top buttons and also the d-pad at that point it gives you that option to generate it so we can straighten we can change the aspect ratio crop and save let's go in there so that makes the jpeg out of that resize Gives you some options to adjust output. So if you want a smaller JPEG, let's do that. Going to the third page, we've got rating. This one can be helpful if you use Canon's official software. You can set those ratings and then you'll have them on the computer. It basically, basically will save that rating data into the EXIF information on each photo. So in this case, let's pick a few images to adjust. So I'm changing the star rating on there. Just go through the photos and add that rating. So four stars. Easy enough. You can also select a range of photos you want to apply that rating to so we want those ones and then we can change actual star rating so use the top dial on the camera but you can use these buttons here on the screen itself or you can do all images all images in a folder for the slideshow this might be good with HDMI output but in this case, you can just display photos, repeat, transition. So slide in one, slide in two, fade. Let's do that real quick. So for whatever reason, if you want to do something like that, it's an option. 
we get out of here. So if you want to select specific images, this is a lot of functionality in here. One's rated with stars. So we have a few five star images. And it'll show only those specific images. Let's go into playback. See it's only showing the five star images and it's got this little border telling you that it is a search. So that's a quick way to label and find photos on the camera itself. So you want to clear this. You can use this clear here or one of the buttons. So that's good. Image jump. This gives you a little functionality to quickly go through the photos. You can jump by one with the top dial. See this here? It means it's using that top dial. Go 10 at a time. We've got a number of photos you specify by date, folder, movies only. So if we go into movies only, we go into playback, it's going to just show movies. So that's pretty useful if you want to pull out just photos, just movies or whatever. Stills only, protected images only, or also by rating. So in this case, if we wanted to pull out those specific rated ones again, go into playback and it'll only show those ratings. We can zoom through those. Go in here and just select 10, 10 images. I think that's the default. So it's just a little quicker to go through photos. In that case, page four. This one is pretty interesting. This is helpful. You can decide what pages you want to display and toggle through. So you can unselect certain ones, but it gives you a lot of options to adjust things. And you can go into info on specific ones and decide which type of histogram you want to show up. So RGB or brightness. See this changes right here. Let's do that one more time. So that changes. In this case, just go in there. And then what that means is in playback, you press the info button, it'll toggle through those certain screens. So a lot of information. If you want all of that information, or if you just want a simple playback screen, you can go into there again and just deselect every single one. At that point, we can play back and you can see that it does not show anything. So you can look through your photos in that situation without having any stuff on the screen. This one's really interesting, AF point display. So if you turn this on, it'll show you where you focused in the photo or at least attempted to focus with the camera. So in this case, see that red square? That is where I focused. That's really helpful in a lot of situations to just get an idea for that. So in this case, right there, pretty interesting. And I assume all of this information you can open up in Canon specific software. In third party software, probably unlikely, but at least if you use Canon's DPP software, you'll be able to see that information. So we got one more. I really honestly do not know what this does. I've been trying to figure it out, looking for information, but view from last scene. Uh, I'm just going to leave that one up to you to find out. So that was a look at the playback menus on the Canon EOS M50. A lot of interesting stuff in there that I might use in the future, but in general, I'm going to focus more on what I was doing with the uh, generating JPEGs from the raw photos in the camera if I wanted to push those to phones or whatever. In that case, it is really helpful, but there are quite a few things like tagging photos with stars or protecting specific photos that can be pretty helpful. So anyways, that was a look at that. Some of the features like the photo book thing and the printing thing, I really don't know too much about. And if you know, feel free in the comments to mention specifically what they do, how they work. That would be pretty interesting for everyone. But besides those in general, there's a decent amount of features that I could see being pretty useful. 
Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Scott from Dark Bonsai. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. That helps me out a lot. Likes and shares help out a lot as well. Thanks again.